recent releases. Um, I th- um, we had two, uh, I think in the last month or so. Um, one point twenty six. This is mo- mostly. I think last two were mostly um, working on the abstract connection resolver. Um, so a lot of a lot of refactoring and some, uh, yeah, deprecations and stuff in there. Um, so that that was a uh, one point twenty six. That was three weeks ago. We have one release getting ready. Minor one coming out. I think probably uh, Monday. Um, one point twenty five. Same thing. Some abstract connection resolver stuff in here. Um, and updated WP GraphQL test case. Yeah, so mo oh yeah, we did fix an uh, an issue with the query analyzer as well. Um uh yeah, Jeff I think was actually asking about this. Speaking of what you see the fees. Can I tell him to this? Um yeah, I'm gonna send him a link because I was just talking to him in Discord. I don't know if he knows that the time is now. So I will say that's something to say about it. Okay. Uh yeah, so that's uh that's the last couple releases uh for core WP GraphQL. Um WP GraphQL. ACF, I think it's been kind of quiet the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we had it's been about a month uh since the latest release there. WP GraphQL IDE. This is where Joe and I've been spending most of our time right now. Uh so we've we've had a handful of releases um in the past couple of weeks. Um been been working on trying to trying to get it ready for core um uh core WP GraphQL merge. Um so yeah, there's there's been a handful of releases. Um we did we did start working on some of the pluggable APIs. So like we have this new register document editor toolbar button API that allows you to add buttons here. Uh that's the first one that we worked on. So all of these buttons are written as plugins now. Oh. So they all they all make use of this register document editor toolbar button. They're bundled, they're bundled with um oh. They're bundled with the uh, code base, but they're written using the API. So, uh, and we we actually to prove it, we actually worked on it in a separate plugin. We we built all the we built all of these as separate plugins, and then merged them back in to the code base. But we just wanted to prove that a third party PHP plugin can on queue another JavaScript that can access things like the query document, like when you click the prettify button, it has to have access to the document to know how to format the document and then write it back to the state, right? And uh, so all these buttons like authentication, it has to access the fetcher and tell it to fetch as authenticated or not. So like for that button to work, we had to have certain filters in place in the code base to say like a third party can modify this and make it do its thing. So we worked on that. That exists right now. I'm not 100% committed to like not breaking this yet. So this is where I'm a little bit hesitant on what version of the IDE do we put in WP GraphQL and or how do we communicate it, right? Mm. Like, uh, so that is some of the topics we can talk about today. But so that that exists now. And then we're working on this. I have this in progress, the the actual what like plugin bar. Uh, we've been working on settings pages too. So core WP GraphQL settings has like two options. You can either disable the IDE altogether, or you can enable disable the admin bar link for it. This is, we added a new tab in the IDE plugin right now for the IDE settings specifically. So this allows you to choose how you want it to behave. Do you want, do you want to enable the drawer when you click the admin link? Do you want clicking the admin link to open a dedicated page like it the old one does or do you want to disable the admin bar link altogether so like you have those options now uh and then do you also want to use the legacy editor right like some people may want both or may want the old one and not the new one may want the new one not the old one 
So for the time being, because I know, I know some people have built extensions for the old one. Um, I don't think they're because it did have some filterable APIs in the old one too. Um, so I know some folks are using it. So at least for the time being, the plan is to kind of have both available and then put it like a removal date on the old one. I think is kind of the plan. We we go back and forth on that. Um I've I'm also a proponent of just like get rid of it so I don't have to worry about it. But and like we could add it. Like when WordPress, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers when WordPress removed the links feature, right? They took it out of WordPress core and said, here it is as a plugin. Like if you needed it, install this plugin. But like technical breaking change to WordPress. But like if it was important to you, you could add it back. So like that's an option too, is we just rip it out and say, if it's important to you, here it is as a plugin. If it's not, cool. Uh, so we- Word, yeah. WordPress core does not make breaking changes. That's blasphemy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like, what what do we want to go? How, how do we want to handle that? Um, Cause like, like I said, one thing, like I want this to be in core. I think ever since we got the authentication added back here and these plugins added back, I personally have not used the legacy one in two, three months, probably like I haven't only, I only have opened it to look at like feature parity. Like, are we, are we doing equal or better than that? Like I don't actually use it. Um, Jason, so, did you talk to, did you talk to, um, Thomas Hay and Brock from, uh, from Stellate, because he gave you praises on on this, but he said, "Hey, what friction?" Yeah, I, I wrote. Did you ever meet him with him? Uh, no, like we oh, didn't okay. Zoom or anything. I okay. have met him in the. I've met with him in the past, like um, when I was work because he works for yes, yeah, Stellate, and uh, like when early days of Smart Cash and stuff, we oh yeah, yeah. talked about some stuff. <clears throat> um, okay, I I also audited their work because Stellate has a. WordPress plugin, so I like to kind of like oh, they do? for them. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. So we we've been we've been working on this a lot. Um, I have I have like the plugin bar or whatever we call it. I think it we're we're trying to figure out how we name these things. We're taking a lot of cues from VS Code um, and how they name things because if you if you look at the UI, it's very similar to how VS Code is structured. Right? You have this bar to the left. VS Code calls it the activity bar. We're calling it the activity bar, right? And then if you click one of these uh, buttons here, it opens a panel. We're calling that the activity panel. So like these top buttons here open the activity panel. These are called activity bar utilities. These are buttons in the activity bar, but they open something else. Like this doesn't open anything. It refreshes the schema. This opens a modal with some uh, short keys. This opens your settings modal, right? So that's kind of like the expectation here is like these will open a panel. These will do something else. These will directly interact with the editor. Um, so things like that. We're trying to come up with these pluggable areas that third parties can hook into, do stuff, and then have like a kind of common reference language or whatever, like how we talk about each of these regions. And then also like how you identify the state that you need to do something like we're using Redux for this internally. So there's like different Redux stores. Like there's an editor Redux store for the editor component. Uh, there's a different store for this like panel area. Uh, so like if you need to do something like register a button, that actually adds a button similar to Gutenberg, right? When you register a block, it adds it to the block store. When you add a button to here, it adds it to the activity bar store. When you add a button here, it adds it to the editor store. Uh, the query is maintained. I think right now the query itself is maintained by the app store. We have a generic app Redux store. That'll that'll probably change to the... We have document editor store, so that'll probably end up being in there. The schema, when you refresh it, when you refresh the schema, that's like in the app store because it's like a global kind of thing. Um so we're we're working through stuff like that and how we name things, how we communicate things, how we document things, and then we're f kind of following the pattern of WP GraphQL like with this access functions. Um, so these like register X, Y, or Z functions, we're calling access functions similar to WP GraphQL like register GraphQL type, register you know whatever GraphQL field. Um, 
So these are these register functions that you can call that's basically just a shortcut to add something to Redux, just like register block type is in Gutenberg. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're going with that. So we're still working on like these APIs. We're uh, I, that and that's where I'm torn. Like, do we do we get do we get graphical in its current state where you can open it in a drawer without the pluggable APIs? Do we get that into core like ASAP, right? Like get it into users' hands, even if it's hidden right now behind an option where you have to enable it, uh, like an opt-in type of thing, but it's there. Like it's people can start using it today. Or do we wait until this is all finessed and do it all at once? Or do we do a two-phase thing where it's like, here it is today, no extensions, you, you know, you can't extend it. But in three months from now, we do another release and we're like, hey, now it's extendable and here's all the docs for it. Um, yeah. I think this is, and I think I might've said this before, I think this is the perfect uh, use case to trial out our extensions API. Yeah, or the experiment mm -hmm. thing. The experiments API, whatever we're calling yeah. it. Ex yeah. Yeah, I think that lets us put it in. I mean, I don't want to say as is, but like even put it in with like knowing that the API is going to change because it's under experimental and then it's best of both worlds. The question about when we um, when we decide to get rid of the old graphical and move it into a plugin or whatever that solution is just becomes graduating the experiment into core. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, a... You give me you you give me like a, a date estimation or whatever, and I will get that PR ready in time for you. Yeah, I mean we're I mean I we should uh, maybe meet separately or whatever after yeah, this sure. and go over like the current state of things. And I'm still torn on the experiments thing, um, largely just because it's like man, it's one one more feature to maintain. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just torn on it because, like, yeah, what, what if that feature itself has a breaking change? You know, like, yeah, no, it's uh, fine. It's uh, experiments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the but, uh, this doesn't make sense to be a plugin uh, because, like, it's it's affecting mm -hmm. core behavior. Where in theory, moving it into core soon, we want your feedback already is now. If you want to be nice and potentially like break things by trying the cutting edge, it's it's no different than having a beta branch, except yeah. it hangs around. Yeah, but but yeah, like uh, demarcating. I think we started that conversation uh, on like on the on the PR, and we should probably like move it to like something that's like actually like face to face. But um, but yeah, it's just delineating like what makes sense as an experiment, and then okay, if if this is what we're defining as an experiment, then is this something that we want to assume um, the responsibility for making sure it works? And, and all of the tech debt that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh let's have that conversation soon because I feel I th I think we are we're pretty close, I think, to having something that we can put in core in one way or another. It's mostly those administrative decisions on like like settings, for example, how do we want to actually handle this? Like this is the current state. If you activate the plugin, this is the current state. If it were to go in core, would it look exactly like this, or what, what do we need to do to change it to be in core? If it was an experiment instead of this, then what? Ha like we'd have an experiments tab. You activate it, then do you also get this tab, or would these settings live under the experiment itself? Or like I don't know. Uh, we, there's stuff like that we just need to figure out. Like what's the, what's the user experience in the temporary phase and the permanent phase, right? Um, yeah, 100%. and then. Yeah, and then like how do we how do we formally deprecate the old one like at the 2.0 release? Do we just finally pull it out? Um yeah, things like that. Uh so it's mostly like the technical side of it, I think, is pretty much ready. It's just some of those some of those details we need to figure out, which there's a little technical stuff that goes with that, but uh like the IDE itself, I think, is in a pretty good state. Like all the features that used to work in the old one work in the new one but better in my opinion, it looks nicer. Um, it's easier code base now to maintain and, and add things to and fix and whatnot. Um, so, so yeah, I think uh, we, we need to make decisions on that sooner than later. I want to get into people's hands. Um, I think it's, I think it's a good experience and I want to just get rid of all the ones. So I don't have to, one less thing I have to worry about. Right. 
So that's that's where we stand on that. That and that's been kind of, that's been mostly consuming my time. Um, that this is what, where I've been spending most of my time right now. Um, is trying to get this all pluggable and extendable because of a lot of future features that we want to add. Like smart cache, in my opinion, is pretty poor on the user experience in the admin. Right, like uh, I've got a lot of stuff I want. I want to be able to open up the IDE, save a query directly from there go find a list of my persisted queries that are already saved, click one, edit it, edit things like my max age header, stuff like that directly in the graphical IDE, even, you know, share links to the query with the coworker. I'm like, hey, do you think this query will work for our component or like whatever, things like that. Um, other cool features like we can explore down the road would be like saving fragments, right? Like, ooh, I have this fragment and I can save this fragment and then I can just reference that as a global fragment in any query, right? Without having to rewrite the the fragment, right? Or things like that. Um, so th those are all like future features that I think having a extendable UI will allow us to iterate on with, you know, similar to experiments themselves. Like we can, I can work on it as a plugin and be like, hey, what do y'all think of this? Like activate this thing, test it out. So I can show you some of this in action, actually, if you guys are interested. Um, might as well, huh? Uh, it's, uh, so we have, we have like, yeah. So like, here's the query composer, for example, right? Like, and th and this is written as a PHP plugin that on queues uh, JavaScript, right? Um, so I'll, I'll show you like, kind of how that, how that works. So we have the main PHP plugin for the graphical ID. Basically, right now, like as we're just working on this, we just have this third-party plugin PHP just being included automatically. So if I if I actually disable that PHP file and then uh refresh here, open the IDE again, cool, everything works except the query composer's gone, right? Because that's a that's a plugin that is now being on queued by a PHP file, right? So now I can refresh. I just added that back and boom, here we have a query composer, right? So this query composer lives in a separate PHP code base that on queues some JavaScripts. That script calls register activity panel query composer. It sets an icon, it sets a name, and then it provides the component to render in the panel. So like I can actually, you know, I could change this to whatever. I don't think I have the, oh, I do have it running. So I could actually run like some custom name, right? Like I, I can change that and uh, let's see. Yeah, some custom name, right? So my, my third party plugin can hook into this, this thing and then um, and since it's using Redux, right, I my plugin has access to the schema via Redux. My plugin has access to the query that is here, right? And then it has access to set the query. So, and that, that's how this feature works, right? It reads the schema to get all the fields. It reads the current query in the document. It figures out which fields are in the query that need to be checked. And then it can write back to the query and it can read back if I change something in here, like the checkbox, you know, shows up, right? Boom, right? So it's this bi-directional communication using Redux, right? This component listens to Redux, this component listens to Redux. They both write to Redux. And uh, yeah, so that's a uh, third, third parties can now access that state from the app and do stuff with it. Um, so yes, so persistent queries, I think you can visualize that hopefully if you're a visual thinker, like clicking a button here that's like saved queries or something like that. And then you have a list, you know, similar to this or whatever, that's like query A, and then you can click it and open it over here in a tab, right? Or whatever. Uh, query B, and you click it, open it. And then you can ideally indicate like whether it's a saved document visually you'd have some indicator like vs code does right like where it's like yellow or green or red or whatever like ooh, this is an invalid document don't save it yet right or like ooh, this is valid but not saved 
or this is a saved document with no changes, things like that. We want to be able to visually communicate that type of stuff. Um, but then, and then like all the, all these areas will be pluggable too. So we'll be working on like, once we get this area finished, say that again. Is the, is that slash test where you're rendering the IDE? Like that, that's a normal page. Yeah. Yeah. So we can, we can open this anywhere now. So like I can be the admin, I could just open it here. As long as I'm logged in right and have the admin bar, like I can open it just wherever. Oh, so it's not necessarily showing you queries related to the page you're viewing. No, but that would be a that would be a pretty cool extension too. <laughs> you know, like like if it identified the node that you're on and you could just like click some button that's like query the current page, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That that would be pretty cool. Um but yeah, so that's a uh, yeah, I don't know, that's a uh, gist of like where things are headed. But like I said, I'm not like some of these APIs, I feel like themselves are experimental and like I want the liberty to be able to like change function names and stuff as it develops and we figure out patterns. And I don't want to consider that a breaking change to all of WP GraphQL, right? If I change some function name or some function signature in this JavaScript app, like I don't want to, I don't want to be like, oh, we just broke all of WP GraphQL because we didn't. We just broke the JavaScript for us micro subset of you know like who's who's writing javascript extensions for this very few people can can you know compared to the the bigger market of who's using wp graphql for an api right and so that's where i get torn on like should it still be an extension with its own release cycle can it be a hybrid where we like kind of what Gutenberg does? Like at a certain point, things get merged into core, but it's still being iterated on on the side. And like you can be bleeding edge by installing Gutenberg plugin, and it can be stable by running Word stable by running WordPress core. Um, I mean, they're still shipping breaking changes to core though too. So like, they, I think there's like a pattern of like if it's JavaScript, we don't care. Um, Blasphemy again. There are no breaking changes ever in core. Never. They don't break well, anything between releases. Not CSS classes, not front end. I yeah. don't know why everybody thinks this, but but don't you know, <laughs> nothing gets broken. I, I was told one time when I pointed that out, like way back in probably 2016 or something, I, I was like, hey, the, this was a breaking change. It wasn't documented. And they're like, is your data still in the database? I said, yeah. Then it's not a breaking change. Well, literally my page won't load. Well, the data's still in the database. What? Like, when did like drop tables become the only breaking change? Like, this makes no sense. But, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a weird line to draw. It's like when you install WP GraphQL, you want you want the API, right? This is a cool tool that helps. Like, if I change a function name in this, your API still works, right? Your extension to this might not work, and that's where it's like, ah, crap. Like, how do we? How do we communicate that? So like, I, I'm real torn. Like me and Joe have talked about like, should it stay a, a plugin with its own life cycle and we just make the, make the um, like onboarding of when you install WP GraphQL, we tell you, hey, also install the IDE here. And then you can update that at your leisure separately from core WP GraphQL. That's one way we can go. Question. Is it the right way? Not sure. What's hey, up? Jason, um, yeah. do you enqueue this script that renders this with WP and Q scripts? Yeah. So if I wanted to query the enqueued scripts for this page right now, would this actually show up? Um, probably. Oh, I might have a use for this, actually. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this right now is uh, anytime the admin bar is there for right now, that's it'll enqueue the um, IDE scripts, too. Oh, so, okay, so if I did, you're saying if I do, like, page. Yep. Uh, In cute scripts. Oh, yeah. yeah, just to be, like, meta here. Okay, so let's, uh, let me go to, I think this I think is it's slash blogs. I think it's an archive, so I don't think uh, I was going to get anything there. No, what am I doing wrong here? Oh. Maybe uh, you can try a query composer. Yeah, yeah. No, no that, dude. One, that one have helped me here. Um, yeah. 
Well, I guess some like character encoding. Here, it's in uh, cute scripts, and if, and okay. if you and if you're having issues, it might have to, you might have to do on content node. In theory, query monitor WP GraphQL IDE uh, yeah. plugin WP GraphQL IDE render. Yeah, so these are. Oh, I'm gonna be playing with this. Yeah. Uh. Well, we. Yeah. I mean, me and <laughs> me and Joe have talked about how we can. In like two hours. Sorry, uh, I've got children home for the summer. Um. Yeah, me and Joe talked about like. Like Faust, for example, the front end that we work on at WP Engine has an admin bar, right? Like, wouldn't that be dope when you have this front end to uh, have this IDE too? And yeah. to your point, to your point, Jeff, I think you just solved it, right? I could render this page on the front end with just this code alone. I just have to yeah. register this. Uh, All you need is that. I've gotten to the point where I can render the the checkout blocks from WooCommerce in a Next.js application with all I got to do is render the HTML and then queue the JavaScript that comes from the page. Yeah, so yeah, uh, that's it. awesome. <laughs> so I expect, to, I expect to hear from you in like 45 minutes on a working example of this. Yeah, the only thing that I hit a brick wall because uh, their JavaScript, which is a, they use a lot, relies on uh, WC REST. And WC REST in the context relies on either cookies or a token. Uh, which I can't modify or even provide to fake a, a, a WordPress login cookie. So I, I'm thinking what I'm going to end up needing to do is actually uh, essentially rewrite the front end scripts for their WooCommerce blocks and deregister the, the ones they have. Uh, and I'm going to do something similar where it's like experimental. Uh, what is a... What, what well, feels to Woo, Woo scripts are a little bit messier than core the way they handle those built into no, but, all, but a lot of i just trying to be they're nice man horrible. I, I was I'm trying to be nice <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, don't even fuck that no, no, no. i'm <laughs> going I, back I and forth say... between woocommerce blocks where they have clearly taken the bulk of the api code and moved that to the woocommerce plugin and trying to make sense of the shit of where they're because all the code related to bundling the js officially lives in WooCommerce core, but the actual code for yeah. WooCommerce blocks is still in WooCommerce blocks. So what I'm hoping uh, is going to happen based on like some of the like tickets I've been following in, in WooCommerce core and admin and all those others is that with the new, um, with the new directives, shoot, what are they called directives? Uh, with the new interactivity API, um, they're moving a bunch of that stuff um, into the actual block markup. So it's being able to pull in the, the scripts or not will hopefully become somewhat easier going forward. They right here we look so we looked at some releases and talked a lot about the IDE. Um, I don't know what else. Uh, I guess, I guess at this point, I guess if is is anybody have anything? Um, I'll look at? update. Um, just quickly, um, uh, circling back to what we started with, just um, the last two uh, GraphQL releases, uh, 0.25, 0.26. Um, that is 99% of our backwards compatible, um, our our backwards compatible changes to the connection resolver. There's one more filter. Um, there's one more like lifecycle I want to figure out, which is figuring out a way to abstract all of those mapping things, so we could just have a centralized filter to handle like the mapping of the query args to the parse args instead of having those separate sanitize and map functions. Um, but I've all and with that, I'll write like migration docs and like a and like a nice uh, like developer thing so people can actually migrate internally internally um, in. Um, moving my plugins over to the new API, uh, rank math was 17% faster just because I didn't have to like reinstate the WP query. Um, Gravity Forms is twice as fast. Um, and it also let me implement a, um, a model and a data loader that works with the connection resolver for form fields, even though they're static, which is like, which is great. And um, hopefully Facet WP is going to be able to um, Auto register facets as filters now that we don't have to be uh, overwrite the query and we can just use these classes. So I'm personally like again I'm biased because I wrote it, but I'm personally loving the changes. Um, but I will say that um, 
uh, hold off if you don't want to have to do this twice. Just like hold off. Hopefully, um, I mean, Jason said there's another release coming out really soon, so hold off maybe to the end of the month. Um, and there will be like good docs to how to easily like delete two thirds of your current connection resolver code and start using the new thing. Yeah, uh, that's the update there. Experiments API. Uh, we spoke about a little bit at the beginning. Uh, we'll sync to like figure out like the next best steps on that. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else on my side that I'm working on? I wanted to update. I Oh, yeah, there's that one thing still I, I want to bring up. Um, what is it? The uh, interface? Uh... Interface trait, I believe. Oh, yeah. Is that there still, is still a... A... Yeah, I there forgot still about you. A... I'm sorry. Okay. I forgot right. about that. It's not breaking anything. It's just a It's notice. just superficial and annoying, and it ends up oh, with these really it, yeah. long ass trails. Yeah, actually, I think I actually even just saw when I was doing this right here. Yeah, there yeah. we go. <laughs> My bad. Uh, it's... I don't even yeah. know why that's occurring either. Oh, because it's it's an optimistic check. Um, that's why we're only checking um, the specific uh, types and whether they've been called. Um, we're not checking whether it's a call or not an instantiating. We probably don't even want to be instantiating it there. Like, um, I'm not entirely sure um, what the solve is, but it's just we can't be directly just, the, it... just traversing and comparing because sometimes they're callables and sometimes they're resolved. And if even if they are callables, we don't necessarily want to be resolving them yet. Um, yeah. Or maybe the, we want the, to be resolving all of them though. and comparing it. The, the, the no, types the types are the interfaces are are resolved types. Whereas the what we're filtering from I don't have the ticket open in front of me, but like There's one, one, of them one side is built and one yeah. side is the string reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah, of them yeah. is the config and one of them is the actual type. Yeah. 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 So like we got to figure that, and then also inside the logic, I think like the checks need to be probably like a little bit more stricter, and we'll like add some extra educations for this for these yeah. stupid ass uh, <laughs> debug messages. <laughs> but yeah, but listen, listen, it's it's fixing what was actually broken, and yeah. as far as, the, I'm, the, like, the as, far as I know, this isn't works. actually breaking it's anything. The debug message that's broken, like. Yeah, it tries so it doesn't to run stop a, a, a it from. Deck. It doesn't stop the argument from from working. It's just referenced. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. Oh, that slipped my mind. Maybe I'll the thing jump is, on that this week. The weekend. reason I added it was because otherwise you wouldn't actually know what was causing your breakage or why the fields were missing to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to have sort of a message and 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 not really because it was if it doesn't break, there's no reason to stop it from breaking or stop the the schema from loading here. Yeah. Uh, so. Just that was notified. definitely a good call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all on what I think is like large and pending. Yeah. That'd be just funny to see Boolean equals Boolean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff, how do you, I have a, I'm, I'm just curious, how do you handle like localized um, data with NQs? Like, how does that work right now in, in the GraphQL landscape? Yeah, oh, totally so know. if you put before and after, there, there's three fields. There's before, after, and extra data. So localized scripts generates after extra data. So yeah. it, it, it effectively is it's a JSON object. Now on in Next.js, you can they have a script. Uh, you can do a plain script tag, or you can just use their script tag. And when you want to do uh, internal JS, I initially thought you could just use a valve. But you can just do drop dangerous set. Uh, but what really works is doing set dangerously. In, okay, uh, yeah. Okay, got HTML, it. Yeah, makes sense. And you can drop an inner script and it'll work. Uh, the, the trick, I have a fix on the way because the, the, the big issue with this is the fact that it's a nested list. It's not a flat generated list. And it do, it is missing some of the scripts because some of the uh, scripts, like say per se, scripts registered by uh, blocks are yeah, called like much later than just WP uh, in Q scripts. So what I've ended up doing was I fake a page render by doing WP head and WP footer inside of an OB start and an OB clean tag uh, and, and run uh, in queue scripts before that. And I end up with all the necessary uh, uh, dependencies in the right order. And then I generate, then I, then I, do a, then I run effectively a, a, a list to, create, to convert it from the tree into a flat list of dependencies based upon the proper order. Uh, just... A simple function, a function I added to uh, content node. Um, yeah, cool, cool. And so, what the, you you should you'll get a flat list of uh, 
of pretty much everything you need. And then what you end up doing is uh, you'll have, I added another parameter for the group. That's a new field that was added recently to replace the uh, the header and footer. Cause now you can, you can set de defer and async as well as whether it's in the header and the footer. Uh, so I added a new group there and it'll be with strategy and group. And by using group, you will separate, you'll, you'll split your results between header results and footer results, rendering your header results in a script in script tags before your page content and then re re rendering your footer results in uh their footer scripts in the in uh script tags below the content uh when you want to render it to the footer to me to the header you have to set uh on the next script uh parameter a parameter called before uh interaction any uh script set with before interaction gets injected into the head by uh next js and then when you want to do defer you can actually pass defer async directly to the script and then everything in the footer you're going to use after interaction or on lazy load uh blog poster didn't happen i was, huh? I was saying uh, suggest that yeah oh i i can't i can't give you a quick demo right now too uh it, the interactivity on, on the page in general won't be perfect but like i said Word, woocommerce uses uh they use um What's it called? The uh, WC REST, and, and I'm using uh, headless. So uh, and somewhere around here, uh, this bad boy right here. Uh, while you're, while you're looking for it, um, I just wanted to something that you mentioned. And it's probably something that we should all take stock on. There's been a lot of changes to WordPress in the last five years because of Gutenberg, but yeah. isn't directly related to blocks. Um, we don't necessarily have tickets for like backfilling that sort of stuff and we might want to start like thinking about that like all of those yeah. like miss those extra new properties that that relate to scripts and styles um global styles is something that is probably much easier to bring to core um certain settings that fall into our parameters currently meaning because we only we only add settings that actually have a type but like there's some that actually do have like a fixed type in the system that we could add uh something we might want to start considering uh for easy pickup work uh, yeah. non-breaking additive and another another thing not right now but in the not too distant future now that gutenberg is much more stable than it has been in the past uh, okay. like there's a lot of projects oh, well, that, yeah that bridge gutenberg to wp graphql like the one i've used the most is wp graphql content blocks um i've, I've used that one the most WP but i've had engine. most issues with that one too yeah um I think so there's a lot of great features there that they that they were so in between in limbo that it kind of yeah. got skewed. But I honestly so, think that the way Gutenberg grow has grown has made us we need to rethink our whole way of of using it, and that's why I came to this conclusion. With the full site editor, there's still a lot there that I don't want to say is it, it, it doesn't necessarily make headless less uh, less a reliable tool, but so much as it, we need to just sort of it, 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 a different way of integration. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm using be. like a lot of plugins, uh, plugins. I'm using like a lot of custom code to add uh, to add uh, those like FSC types and bring them over. Um, uh, in, in theory, in theory, they'll be polished and bring back. But definitely, I think circling back to like what Jason was starting to say is starting to like think about like bringing whatever those patterns are, but like taking the best from everything and bring them into core. Yeah, exactly. like yeah, I think yeah, yeah, because we there's a lot of projects like VIP has their own version of supporting Gutenberg with WP. JSON no. doesn't count. I'm sorry. That's true about VIP. It's true about a bunch of the other ones dumping things into JSON. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, they, it they defeats have, the purpose. Yeah. What, it, what is it? Um, what, it, what is their uh, block data API? They have yeah, it's just VIP block API. Yeah. That's what it's called. They have, I mean, they have some stuff like you query like this, but then yes, yeah, some of the fields are, uh, yeah, some of the fields do end up, but like, yeah, I mean, you can query. It, it's just everything is name value. It's like name value. Exactly. So like, There's no type checking. It, yeah, no... It, yeah. It's it's like, oh, this this value is an integer, for example, but it's going to be a string, and this value, like, everything is a string, and it's like, well, yeah. the reason Java, I chose JavaScript written by PHP well, developers. Yeah, it, it's what I write. Like a, this is even like a step back from REST. Because at least REST still would tell you, like, this field's going to be an integer or whatever. Uh, where now it's just, I mean, maybe, unless they designed it the same way for the REST, too. Um, 
but like so anyway it's like what what does this do well because people are using it right that it does do some things well for users right so what can we learn from this implementation versus content blocks implementation versus like peter's original wp graphql gutenberg implementation which a lot of people still use yeah a lot of people still use that one so like what what I think it would be good to kick that back off and at some point and say like, okay, what are the patterns that are working in each of these? What doesn't work? And then figure out like, yeah, how how and when should WP GraphQL core support this? Or should it should it remain like a blessed? I just plugin? make JS libraries, bro. Well, but learning from how you consume it is very important to that. Like if you if you're doing stuff in JavaScript, I need to know how to support that though. Um, I will just share quick anecdotes from from like the clients that I've been on. Um, RTN, like myself, like we've got clients using both stuff. Um, the WP block, whatever it's oh, called, is is easy. I think you're sharing my face. Yeah. Uh, the w, oh, no, WP uh, the WP, the WP but, block API um, is easier to implement because like you get everything. Um, and you don't have to worry about changes from version to version. Whereas, because it's typed, um, you um, when you're using uh, content blocks, you get what's there, but it's a little bit more fragile because, as we all know, Gutenberg doesn't break anything from release to release, mm-hmm. um, and because like they have to intentionally expose new data. That's been the, the trade-off between the two functions I've been seeing. But also the raw rendered patterns, I think that helps with um, with like most of that. And it's really just um, a shift, especially for people who are like using uh, WP GraphQL Gutenberg originally. It's that same shift of switching from like defined queries to node by URI and generic interfaces. So it's more of like a, just a query pattern um, that people just have to learn and adopt. That's that's my two cents. Yeah. All right, but uh. This is, uh, if you can see my screen here, this is oh, something already. Let's not do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you can see my screen here, it was loading the uh, the checkout page. Uh, and as you see, the, this is coming up with the cart empty. Uh, down below here are uh, where you start to see these these scripts get loaded in. And these are all scripts from the page. Uh, th- there, there's a bunch of scripts here, event, even pay- things that are being used. Here. I, have, I, I do a, a bunch of event ticket stuff too. So that's all in here for, so a bunch of their scripts are in this page. But these are all scripts that come up when you have the enqueued script, when you call that, that query for this page within that node. Uh, at the moment though, there are a lot of scripts that would typically render in the footer also rendering at the bottom of the header here, but they are deferred. Uh, and because they're deferred, they're, they, it doesn't really change their load time. But when I alter this, they will render in the in the footer. Also, you oh, no, no, wrong thing, wrong thing to hit. Uh, network tab is what I wanted. You'll see that like uh, all the JS, I know it's working because all the JS triggers, and if I look in the console, I only get this one error complaining about the stripe details missing. Uh, I came up with the methodologies to a certain degree to to sort of fake some of those, but a lot of them come with direct links or full URLs directly back to the REST API. So I can't really fake that. But again, it's, it, it, for for what's right here for most pages would 100% work. This is just checkout and, and the, the, the JavaScript heavy pages from uh, WooCommerce. Like, I was on cart earlier, uh, same deal. The It fail, It works to a degree as far as loading up. Oh, yeah, and I'm, me trying to prop the free the images onto the, into my funky next image component. <clears throat> But yeah, this is still. <sighs> yeah. Um, but do, actually, let me... regarding the experiments talk, do you, uh, I don't know, discord me sometimes that work 
for you and or I'll Yeah, 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 we'll co- we'll coordinate on Discord and uh and go from there. But huh. but most of my week next week is pretty flexible, so like I can make whatever time works probably for you. 2 2 a.m. That's usually when you're getting the most work done. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, and this is what the uh, what the quarry looks like. So I just have to base the content here for the con- content block page, and uh, I wanted to collapse that, but. All these are the scripts in the order that they should be loaded. Well, actually, I'm not sure about that, actually. Hey, can you throw that on? Uh, yeah. No, I, I was seeing the, uh, the old IDE. Uh, I'm using the new IDE. Yeah, man, my eyes are burning, Jeff. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad. I don't use the new one, man. Like, I'm, I'm, uh, crap. Uh, no, no, can you we're, make this one dark? No. Not easily. <laughs> It's you, all you good. To plug it. It's all good. No, yeah, yeah. no, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is, well, no, I do want to use it, though. I want to see if I can actually load it up on the page. If, uh, I want to see That would be sick. Yeah. So, uh, where you're querying uh, what's on the page, it should, yeah. Yeah, go to the regular repo. I just got to pull it in, right? Yes, it, it's only on GitHub right now. So, nice. uh, it's just the regular repo slug hyphen IDE. Yeah. All right. So let me one of these things here. Uh, oh, this is perfect. Uh, get clone. Uh, I would, uh, I would just get the. I mean, you could just. I would just get the release artifact. I mean, you, I guess you, could do some money. you said just get the, the just get the. Yeah, I would just go download the zip real quick. All right. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to do all the npm install, npm build, all that stuff. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. But, but we just want to wait an hour for. Oh, I need to install. There's a link in the Zoom chat. Oh crap! <laughs> crap. Uh, get one. You said to do install. Yeah, npm install, npm run build, uh, and then to just throw it in development mode. After that, just npm start. We're using WP scripts, so oops. if you work with that. Oh, I didn't move into the damn directory. I feel like a dipshit. Hey, none of us noticed that. So, <laughs> like, like I just straight up just like, oh, uh, is this fine? Then, uh, I, I legit just thought like we were shipping the plugin with an that empty directory. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn, we forgot to include that in the zip. And, uh, <laughs> we're getting ignoring it. Oh, and you don't even have dark mode on local uh, either. Oh, oh man. man. Mm. Yeah, dark mode on your browser, but I gotta go put some Plugins. sunscreen. Uh, <laughs> sunscreen. <Lens off. laughs> Yeah, it should. Uh-oh. No, 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 again. Starts with looking the for this bad boy. Yep, yep, there it is, man. He's going to change your life, dude. I don't know activate. about all that, but activate that <laughs> thing. Look at your eyes, you man. Look at your the... eyes, Jeff. I think you got to go to the settings and then. Settings there. Yep. And then go to the IDE, should have settings. Oh, your thing show up at the end now. 
Oh, oh, it might have no, no, already. You, it might have already been. Was you don't want to show the then? legacy? No, no, yeah, it, it might have already been working. If yeah, it, it'll if it's activated, it'll it'll automatically default to. Oh, it even, it even has my history. Oh, yeah. oh wow, I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm dude. Impressed. There it is. <laughs> yeah, same glory, same local bro. storage values. Dude, this thing is sick. My eyes. Dude, that that's <laughs> that was cool from this sound like seeing that just yeah. fucking nice. Oh yeah, that's great. But Jeff, if oh. you're saying you already have like the code to implement where if I'm on a post uh page. Yeah. And, so we'll and you can just query what's already on the page if if like a content editor dumped data in there, that would be sick. Yeah. So let's let's take this one for instance. Uh yeah. what's my IDE for this one? I think it's uh let's do a quick not edit, I'm gonna do quick edit. So let's take the slug here. And I think I'm using uh why do I hop back to this? I'm in my I need a window. I'm not sure what I'm using for uh for, for permalinks for post at the moment actually. Uh because I'm just I'm just passing this to node by URI. Uh, effectively to render the specific page. Oh no, it, it, it worked. So like any of the JavaScript that would that comes along with that gets quarried. Um, I can even show you the code. The, the, I I'd probably be better off just showing you the. It's wild though, like actual code for it. So the quarry itself. Is um, um, I want the full tutorial on how to use jQuery on Q by WordPress in my headless next JS. <laughs> you know what? I tried to deactivate. Like, the thing is, if you actually try to deactivate Word jQuery, you're gonna break a bunch of shit. Well, I'm sure <laughs> a lot of pages still use it. It's uh, just it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just actually wild. very like, funny. That's the content I've been missing. So, like a lot of the a lot of the JS scripts directly from WordPress use oh, yeah, know, know. to do AJAX action still. Yeah. So if you pull it out, man, you got to replace it. But the quarry is um I thought it was at the top. I don't know if it was. It's probably at the bottom. Oh no, uh, it a uh, node. And it's because I'm in the wrong operations maybe. Okay. Oh, I'm in the wrong project. Uh, that's what happens when you have multiple windows, multiple uh, IDEs open. Go to definition. Oh, I see what you're doing here. I I rely heavily on code gen. Uh, it's a huge time, time saver. Uh, but this is the script I'm effectively running. <laughs> you know, this actually, I didn't realize that the cat, did you remove the cap from the connections resolver uh, query limit? Um, No, but it might not be enforced on the script. Uh, yeah, it might not be enforced on the screen. It shouldn't be. I'm not sure. It shouldn't be. Simply because it's not uncommon to have something like 500 different friggin' scripts. Well, yeah, uh, it's, it's not uncommon to have a lot of any type of data, but, like... No, but I mean, like, even on new sites. It was something that I, I realized in, in my call. Like, we would do... We, we would... I would do, like, 100. I would do 100. And I would still have, and it would render with like stuff missing. That's wild. And then I realized that I, I had to do something like 500 to get everything. There's yeah. like a bunch of different jQuery, uh, so, like jQuery extensions that have their own that get registered. Yeah, sure. That's one of those things where it like makes you like it. All, the limit almost would make you question like, do I actually need all this? Like and, and this is just for one page. Yes, but <laughs> like this is just for one page. Yeah, that's a damn. And the, yeah, that's a, a lot of stuff. 
That's a lot. Yeah. And so, like, little stuff like the car. Oh, crap. Like the car. All right, so now now get the IDE to render on your fr front end right. next app. Yeah, that was, so we're, that is the goal. So you, so you just need to output a component with the correct Dude, that, ID, yeah. right? And then boom, it works. Long, That'd be sick. <clears throat> yeah, I was just thinking we could filter the. Right now, it's not filterable, but I guess you could filter the localized script. Oh, I was trying to fix this crap earlier. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, like supply a filterable uh, root ID. So I've that... been migrating my uh, my uh, session management tooling to uh, to use to utilize cookies instead of uh, local storage. Simply because uh, just cookies are the better deal, better use it, have better or easier, better for any sort of application where you have a potential server, where you're running server side, I mean, serverless functions of any kind. And in the event of next is the API routes. Uh, you Cookies are like the only way you can actually share state without having to provide authentication tokens to whatever session token, whatever function you're calling. Uh, so I've been migrating those to cookies and trying to do it with next 13 and serverless functions and I broke something. <laughs> but I know I don't think I broke something. I think serverless actions are just different in the way they work. But I'm not gonna try and fix that now. Uh, I'll hand it over. 